Hi, welcome back to Glowing Card Gaming. Uh, reaction Monday, I guess, to the Broncos Texans game. Um, yeah, I, I guess it was wrong on the score and who would win and stuff like that. Uh, as you guys probably already know, the Texans did win that 22 17. Um, now, I did say I didn't think the Texans would score more than 20. So 20 or fewer points. Now 22 is very close to that. Um, that being said, you know that that score was caused <laughs> that that score was caused by that interception um, that Russell Wilson threw down around the Broncos' own uh, 20 or 30-yard line. And from there, they pretty much just walked in. We, we, we pretty much gave them seven points there. Um, if you take that out, Denver wins that game. And even with three turnovers, um, and as, as bad as Denver played, they went 0 for 11 on third-down conversions, which you do that and add three turnovers, what team would be in the game? Denver. Denver was in the game. That came down to the very last play of the game. Uh, what, what, that third interception occurred in the end zone. But Russell had to get rid of it and, and try for the end zone. Now, granted, I think he should have thrown that away. Um, take one more crack at it. But you know, live and learn. You know, I also think they should have taken a timeout a little earlier instead of letting that clock run down 34 seconds. They take a timeout. You know, they get down to the seven like that. They have one timeout. Maybe you try, uh, you know, I, I think maybe on first down you, you go for the pass, right? Because they might be expecting that run. Try and dump it off into the end zone. They know you have that timeout, so they have to play that run, right? It makes it a lot harder on the uh, uh, more difficult on the defense, right? So, or well, you would have had more time, so that if you do run it, you could either get down, spike the ball, or have a second play called, where you could, you know, potentially pass it out of the back of the end zone, stop the clock, or if you ever if you have somebody wide open. You know, you try and hit him. E either way, you know, third down from the the two or three yard line with a run there. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways they could have played it coming down. I I think the defense played just fine, um, and and really a credit to the Texan defense, which was made of sterner stuff. Um, all all of that being said, the real fault or the problem of the game is something that's been a problem for weeks and weeks, even through all of the winning, and it is the Denver offense. Uh, you know, I thought they had everything correct. Um, seemed like last week uh, or the week prior, um, they had everything under control, and the um, it's weird. Um, the Denver D had everything under control, and uh, they were um, progressing and, and good to go. But it seems like they took a step back on the offensive side of the ball. So I, I, everything comes with caveats, injuries, turnovers. You, you know, you never know, and that, again, that's why they play the game. No matter how much you analyze a game or run the numbers or analytics or whatever, playing it out on that field is what matters. And and you know, turning it over three times and and just having an offense that. You know, I kind of see it kind of being shut down in the first half, but they started making those adjustments, 
and they still weren't quite breaking out of that. And they didn't go back to the deep ball, which I think was a mistake because a couple of times, well, and that's not necessarily fair. They did seem to do that a couple of times in the second half as well, and they scored a touchdown on one of those. Um, all that being said, I mean, I think that everything that I've said leading up to this game and this loss, um, I still think the Denver Broncos make the playoffs. Um, though now I think they need to beat the Lions to do that. Um, but if they beat the Lions, I think they went out. I think they went out. You know, they, they finish 11 and, and 6 now. Um I think they have five more games, right? They're six and six. Yeah, five more games. Finish 11 and six. Very possibly could do that because even with the loss and as poorly as the offense played, they almost won that game anyway, despite everything that happened. There's a belief and a tenacity with this Denver Broncos team that's going on right now. They, I think they could beat anybody and everybody in the league. That's including the Niners, that's including the Eagles, that's including the Lions, that's including the Ravens. They could. Will they? That's the real question, and that's why they play on Sunday. The two things I want to say about last Sunday's game versus the Texans, um, really it boils down to Two things for me, um, and one is the offense and getting that moving sooner. Um, converting on those third downs, you need to convert at least one. Um, I guess, I guess not. If you'd have, if, if the Denver Broncos had scored on that last pass instead of throwing an interception. They win that game anyway, um, and it's from the seven yard line. So there, I mean, you know, there there was a chance. I, I even thought they could do like a, a screen out or something like that, where um, maybe on first or second down they do an out screen where, uh, and especially on first down, because then you, you you have a little more time that. If you don't get out of bounds, you don't get in the end zone, everybody lines up and you just spike it real quick so you can run at least one more play. And depending on how close you get, they have to defend both the run and the pass. It, again, makes it tougher on the D. There are things they could have done during that last minute of the game that really could have made a big difference and turned the tide to victory, which brings me to my next point, coaching. You know, I harped on it before, thinking Sean Payton, you know, was not the coach for Denver. He's changed my mind on that. And and the main reason I, I initially thought that was because he wasn't using his players to the fullest extent, right? And a good coach knows how to do that. I think Sean Payton does know how to do that. And I think he is doing that. Now, I don't know if it's the offensive coordinator that failed in this failed to do those adjustments i don't know if it was a team thing i don't know if it was a quarterback coach i don't know if it was um sean payton himself i i don't know where they lost it in the coaching staff but they failed to recognize those changes they needed to do they failed to make changes they especially in the first half they didn't score in well i think they got maybe they got three um in the first quarter or first half, but really not moving the ball, not doing anything. And, you know, I know they were trying some different things here and there, trying to shift things up, trying to run the ball look here or there, you know, with the pressure that they're bringing, the best thing to do in those for that was run the screens. That works. And it did work in the second half. When they finally tried it, it was like, oh, yeah, we forgot we could do this. Oh, we're going to do it now. Oh, it works. Oh, interesting. 
frustrating for a Broncos fan to watch that. Not that I'd be a great coach, but they should be good, great coaches. I think they they just got out coached, got outplayed. Um, the Texans took that a lot more seriously. They took that as if it were a playoff game, and the Denver Broncos just didn't. At least not until mid third quarter, and by then it was too late. The game was pretty much over. Uh, I thought it was kind of over in the first half. I'm gl- I'm glad I stuck around and watched it through the entire thing because that was a phenomenal finish and and way to keep fighting and and fight all the way to the final play. And that's for both teams, the Texans as well. They they played well. They played an excellent game, and they came out on top. They played, and they had to. They had to play to that final whistle. And that's what good NFL teams do. And and the Texans are a good NFL team, and so are the Denver Broncos. That was a phenomenal game. That might be the game of the week, to be honest. As crappy as that first half was, the second half was so much more exciting. Now, I thought there were, again, a few refing um, errors. Uh, I think there should have been some pass interference calls that weren't called. Uh, they, they just consistently seem to be missing things. So I think the NFL needs to maybe even have a, a school or a training session for these guys because it just doesn't seem like they're getting it right on the field. Um, and the, the people in the replay booth all year have... It, it's been frustrating to some extent because it always seems like they send a play back to New York for New York to look at real quick. And you think, okay, they're going to overturn this because here's the evidence. This looks like this should be, you know, over. it should now be incomplete or it wasn't a catch or it was a catch or it was a touchdown or it wasn't a touchdown, whatever the, the case may be. Then come back from break or come back from commercial or come back from being under the hood and just say the call on the field stands. It's like, <laughs> what didn't you guys see in New York? that every other person on the planet watching this caught and understood should you know something should have been changed there and it wasn't and you guys missed it you just missed it and i don't know how you do that on replay in new york um don't don't fully understand that i don't fully get it so um yeah that's just the long and short of it, I, I, I really don't, really don't understand that. So, um, but again, I, I didn't see any replay problems, at least in this game, uh, like I've seen in the past or this year. But overall, the refing has not been great. And um, if anybody saw that Thursday night game. I think that might have been a record number of flags. I've never seen more flags thrown in a professional NFL game. And like a quarter of those, I was like, mm, that's a tiki tack call. They probably could have let that one go. Uh, didn't. So, that being said, it is what it is. Luckily, the Chiefs also lost, but I, I did predict that. Green Bay is legit. Um, Green Bay is probably headed to the playoffs. In my opinion, um, as well. So we'll see. We'll see what happens in the end there. Um, un- unfortunately, because of the loss, Denver's now still just two games back from the Chiefs. They needed to win that. If they had, if if the Denver Broncos beat the Texans, they'd have the tie break against the Texans. But more importantly. I think they actually win this division. I think there's a loss out there for Kansas City that they just haven't experienced yet. Somewhere in the remaining four or five games, Kansas City is going to lose. And if Denver wins out and they and they end up one game behind, you're going to look at this game like the Texans. Should have won that. Definitely could have. 
Uh, the Raiders game, week one. Uh, the Commanders game, week two. Those were winnable games. Should have won them, didn't. And uh, now you're kind of on the outside of the playoff picture looking in. I guess they have a 21% chance of winning. But I do have a feeling that even if they happen to lose against the Lions, I think that's their only remaining loss on the schedule. I think they went out on every other game. And actually, this Denver Broncos team will probably end up beating the Lions. It is just the way that this team is playing. It's very hard to move the ball on Denver. And Denver will score enough points to keep you frustrated. So you may get 10, 12, 13, 17 points. But, you know, starting like mid-third, really, you're going to be playing in a lot of quicksand, a lot of molasses. You're not going to be able to move the ball very well. Unless you get a turnover, something weird happens. I don't think teams score over 20 points. It will come down to the Denver Bronco offense, period. If the Denver Bronco offense is there and plays well, they win. And if they are not there and play bad, they lose. That's pretty simple. Um, and I think everybody can see that now. That's pretty obvious. So um, for this upcoming week, better coaching, better offense, better pizza. Um, so all of that being said, um, I forgot to look at the schedule one second real quick. I just want to see if, um, the Denver Broncos, who their next opponent is real quick. Uh, Broncos schedule. Sorry, I didn't have it pulled up. Um. Chargers. Oh, boy. <laughs> Chargers just played the, the Patriots. Um, and beat them 6 to nothing in what I would call an AFC West Classic. Uh, it seems like in those games in the AFC West, back when there were five teams, Seattle... Seahawks were in the mix. Chargers, Broncos, Raiders, Chiefs, right? And more often than not, it was really the Broncos, the Raiders, and the Chiefs. I mean, occasionally the Chargers would get in there. And back then, Seattle was so bad, they never had a shot. They usually finished in the basement. Um, but they have a Super Bowl now, so that's all in the past. Um, that all being said, the Chargers are awful. I mean, they're just as bad as the Patriots. The Broncos are so much better. Even if they play as bad as they did last week, the Broncos win this game. It, I, I can't see the Broncos losing to the Chargers um, unless everything just falls apart. So the Broncos have to stay vigilant and have to play well. If they do, they will win. Um, I, I don't really think the Chargers score more than 13 here. Um, I, really, I'm not even sure they score more than six. I, I, I kind of think they score, kind of match what they did against the Patriots. Though, being an AFC West, uh, West matchup, generally teams just go all out. And I don't expect anything different from the Chargers. So, we'll go ahead and give them an extra touchdown. Um, Broncos... Offense is probably going to be because the Chargers defense, uh, I mean, it's not very good. So I, I would think the Broncos actually could score 30. Um, so that's what I'm going to say. 31-13, Denver wins this pretty easily. Uh, and then after that, we'll, we'll see because, I, oh my gosh, is that a Friday night game against the Lions? The 16th? Yeah. Yep, that's going to be a Friday night. Um, oh, no, it'll be a Saturday game. That's right. Because the 10th is Sunday, and the 16th will be the following Saturday. 
it, it's a strange schedule. Um, so, yeah. Um, so the remaining schedule, uh, Chargers, uh, Lions after that, Patriots, Chargers, and Raiders. Um, and out of those games, the Lions are going to be the only ones, I think, that could be an L. Will it be an L? I don't know. We'll see how they play next week. If they play lights out, put up the 31 points and, and hold the Chargers to 13. Well, definitely. The, let, let me say this. The Charger, or if the Chargers score fewer than 20 points and the Broncos score more than 30 points, uh, I think they're going to be ready for the Lions. Anything can happen any given Saturday or Sunday. Any given Sunday. It's why they play a game. But I think at this point, the um, Broncos really have proven what they needed to prove. Now, if they need 10 wins to get in the playoffs, they got them. Because whether they win or lose against the Lions, not going to matter. The, the whole thing I've been saying since about week 5, 6, when the Broncos started turning things around and started winning games. Um, I said, this is going to come down to that stupid Las Vegas Raider game at the end of the year. And nothing's changed my mind about that. If they had beaten the Texans, then that might have changed my mind. Because I think that, well, and it wouldn't even have changed it all that much. It, it only would have changed the opinion that um, instead of needing a win against Las Vegas to make the playoffs at the end of the year, they would need that win against uh, the Raiders to win the division at the end of the year. Because I, I do think the Chiefs have a loss somewhere in there. I don't know which game it is, but I, I think it is in there somewhere. It's a, it's a trap game. They're going to lose. It's just the way it is. Um Maybe one of the Charger games. I think they already beat the Chargers once. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they went out. Maybe the Broncos would have had no chance at winning the division. Uh, but I think they do. I think they still do. Though, you know, it, it would take a, a real miracle. Like the Broncos winning out and the, and the Chiefs losing too. Versus divisional opponents. Because if they did that, I think Denver then would own the tiebreak at that point. So we'll see what happens. It's becoming a very interesting season for the Denver Broncos. That loss just, it hurt. Um, but they can still survive it. Make the playoffs and you can win a Super Bowl. Anybody can win a Super Bowl coming into the playoffs. Even if you have a losing record like seven and nine or eight and nine, now it's seventeen games. Eight and nine or seven and ten if you win your division with that. I think I'm gonna end it there. We have a pretty good video. Um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, be sure to like and share, uh, as always. And again, as always, be good to each other, and I'll see you tomorrow with how I did versus the picks and the spread. And we'll do another show where we pick week 14. All right. See you guys then.